3. Speak and write. In today's lesson, we will learn how to write semi-formal letter similar to this one. Before we proceed with this video, please watch 4E1 warm-up and then continue watching this video. A. Below is an email. Well, I put it on the right. It's not below. Matthew Fox sent to SA Winter Travel Agency. In the warm-up video, you can learn about this travel agency and you can learn about this advertisement. It is very important to watch that video. Read it and answer the questions. When it is possible, underline parts of the letter to justify your answers. Now, somebody named Matthew Fox, he wrote this letter to Mr. Al-Hassan. This man works in this travel agency. Now, we will read and understand, and then we will answer the questions, and we will try to justify, give reasons why we chose this and this as an answer. Let's read. Dear Mr. Al-Hassan, I was very excited to see your advertisement about active winter breaks in Saudi Arabia in a local newspaper. He saw this in a local newspaper. Local, like it's sold in Saudi Arabia, not outside, in the same country that you're in. I'm thinking of giving it a try. I'll, I want to try it. So I'm writing to ask you for more information. I want to know more facts. Okay, you listed some facts here. I want to know more. This is why I'm writing. Firstly, can you tell me about the group special offer? What is the minimum number of people required per group? The minimum, the smallest number of people required, needed, per group, for each group. Can we be five? Can we be six? Can we be two? What is the minimum, the lowest number? I would like to come with some friends, but I don't know the exact number yet. Exact is the opposite of uh, approximate. If you say around five people, that is an approximate number. Exact, like, okay, no, five. Not a round of, not six, not four, five. This is the exact number. Also, could you tell me during which months the mountain climbing holidays are available? Are they av available in June, in July, in August? Which months? We are thinking of coming at the end of February or the beginning of March. Furthermore, also, do you provide, do you give any equipment, equipment, items, and tools needed for mountain climbing? Or do I have to buy it and pay extra, pay more money? This is my first mountain climbing trip, so I don't own any, I don't have equipment. By the way, Equipment is always singular. Never say equipments. I don't have any equipments. Uh, no, I don't have any equipment. Lastly, could you let me know what facilities are available? What facilities, what services, what rooms are available at the resorts? I am looking forward to your reply. I am waiting. I am excited to read your reply, to read your answer. To these questions. Matthew Fox 1. Is Matthew writing to someone he knows? Okay, Matthew is writing to Dir al-Hassan. Do you think he knows this man? Is he a friend? Is he a relative? One of his family members? No. He doesn't know this man. He has never seen him before. He just got his address from the advertisement. This is his address, Mr. Al-Hassan, and this is the address. So they have never met. They don't know each other. Where did he find the advertisement? He found it in a local newspaper. Three, why is he writing? What is the reason? He wants to know more information. 
Four, how many questions does he ask? Okay, all the questions are here. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, and five. Five questions. Which words and phrases does he use to list his questions? Okay, this is question one. He used firstly. In question three, he used also. In question four, he used furthermore, which means also. In question five, he said lastly. Firstly, also, furthermore, and lastly. Six, what features, what characteristics make this email semi-formal? Okay, what is semi-formal? This letter right here is semi-formal email. Why? Why is it semi-formal? Well, first of all, semi-formal is a letter you send to travel agencies. If you are one of the guys who uses online shopping, if you want to contact the people who provide the service for your online shopping, then you write semi-formal letters. Informal is what you write to friends. Formal is what you write in newspapers. Okay, let's say that you are writing an article for a newspaper. You should use formal English, formal language. Friends, informal. Letter like this, email like this, you use semi-formal. Semi-formal. Okay, look at this email. Why do you think it's semi-formal? Well, the following features. A. It uses semi-formal language. How do we know it uses semi-formal language? Look, when you read this, you don't feel like it's written for a friend. It's very friendly. And you don't feel like it's written for a newspaper. B. It has an appropriate greeting and signing off remarks. Where is the greeting? Dear Mr. Al-Hassan, how do you greet a friend? You can just say, hey, Mr. Al-Hassan, what's up? That's with friends. But, you know, it is formal to write dear Mr. when you write to someone you don't know. And look at the sign-off. Looking forward to your reply. When you write a sign-off to a friend, you can just say, talk to you later. See you soon. So the greeting and the sign-off are appropriate. See. It uses indirect questions. Where are the indirect questions? Look at this question. Could you let me know what facilities are available at the resort? This question is indirect. How do we make it direct question? By saying, what are the available facilities? This is direct question. What are the available facilities? But in here, it's indirect. Indirect questions are formal questions. Direct questions are informal. When you write to a friend, you write, What are the available facilities? When you write to someone you don't know, you use indirect questions. Could you tell me what facilities are available? We will learn more about indirect questions in the following slide. But before we go to direct and uh, indirect questions, let's analyze this email. This email begins with a greeting. This is the greeting. And then the introduction. What do we write in the introduction? We write the reason why we are writing this. Why are we writing? To ask for more information. And then what do we write? This is the main part. In the main part, we write our questions. In the introduction, we wrote that we are writing to ask for information. In here, we write our questions asking for information. And then, a closing remark asking for a prompt reply, a quick reply. And then you write your name at the bottom. Okay, now remember these steps. 
and when you write questions you use indirect questions we will talk about this now what are direct and indirect questions what are they these are two friends one of them is asking the other where is the shopping mall these two are not friends they don't know each other very well now this is mr al hassan and this is matthew from the email so he is asking mr al hassan do you know where the shopping mall is do you know where the shopping mall is now this question is direct we use direct questions when we ask family and friends this question is indirect okay when do we use indirect questions when we talk to people we don't know very well just like these two mr hassan and matthew they are not friends they are not family so you don't just go and ask where is the shopping mall that is rude that is impolite you want to be nice to people you say do you know where the shopping mall is okay what else can we use beside do you know we can use can could or would you tell me like could you tell me where the shopping mall is or would you inform me where the shopping mall is or can you let me know where the shopping mall is anything would be fine you can use anything you like can could or would and then you tell me can you inform me could you let me know anyone is okay now notice something very important in indirect questions we don't use do does or did never we don't use do does or did here okay in indirect questions two in indirect questions the verb be be is am is and are will and can all these always come after the subject where is the subject here the shopping mall is the subject shopping mall where is the shopping mall shopping mall subject where did the verb be come here before the subject where did it come here it came after the subject see where is the shopping mall where the shopping mall is direct question indirect question this is very important okay verb be will can etc even would all of them come after now before we proceed with the following exercise i want you to change these direct questions into indirect questions one what time does the bank open how will you make this indirect how we have does here don't use do does and did here well we will begin by choosing any of these phrases anyone would you like to use this 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 anyone do you know what time the bank opens where's does no does do you know or can you tell me can you tell me what time the bank opens what time the same thing we copied what time the bank no does instead of using open we use opens why this is present simple the subject is at the bank at if the subject is he she or it we add s to the verb if you don't know what i'm talking about if you want more information about present simple there is a video for present simple on my channel just search for uh present simple full blast present simple and you can watch that video question two how can he open this okay what do we do with can we put it after the subject where is the subject the subject is he so we instead of using can he we say he can do you know how he can open this do you know how he can open this 
or you can use can you tell me can you inform me can you let me know three who took this pen interesting we have no subject and we have no verb be can do does what we will do is just copy one of these phrases and copy everything as it is without making any changes would you inform me would you inform me who took this pen we just copied everything now let's read the information and read the direct questions and then you will have to form the indirect questions you make the indirect questions now please stop this video now try writing the indirect questions yourselves and then continue this video to check your answers one how much does it cost we have does we will not write does here so we will just write how much it costs how much it costs two where is the indoor swimming pool we have is where will we put is we will put it after the subject put it after the subject where is the subject the swimming pool swimming pool we will put it in the end after the swimming pool do you know where the swimming pool is where the indoor swimming pool is three how many rooms have air conditioning okay what will we do we will do nothing we will just copy this as it is can you tell me how many rooms have air conditioning how many rooms have air conditioning without making any changes four what type of extreme sports will I be able to do there? We have will. Do you see will? Where will we put it after the subject? Where is the subject? The subject is I. Will I be able? You will make it I will be able. What type of extreme sports I will be able to do there? now read the plan below when you are writing a semi-formal email asking for information follow the plan below remember to write in a semi-formal style and do not use over friendly forms what do we mean by that now this is a perfect semi-formal letter written to someone you don't know use something similar to this don't write over friendly like you start by saying hey Hassan how are you no that is over friendly don't sign off by writing talk to you later see you soon no that is over friendly that is only with friends you begin with a greeting dear mister dear mrs okay and then you put the last name dear mr al Gandhi, dear mr al Hassan and then you move on to the opening paragraph this is the opening paragraph the introduction you begin by saying where you saw the advertisement I saw it in a local newspaper and why you are writing I am writing to ask for more information use phrases like I saw your advertisement in and I was interested in or you can use I am writing to ask for more information about I would like some information about I was wondering any of these would be fine and then you move on to the main part which is this big part what do we do here we write our questions ask for information in a semi-formal and polite way how do we achieve that by using indirect questions you want to be polite you want semi-formal questions don't ask where are you that is informal that is not polite you do that with friends you want to ask the same question you say can you tell me where you are now that is polite semi-formal 
Remember to use linking words like firstly, first of all, to begin with, secondly, to list your questions. Use indirect questions like I told you. Use appropriate phrases to express enthusiasm. Like what? Like, I was very excited to see your advertisement. This phrase expresses enthusiasm. That means you are excited. I was excited to see you here. And then you write the closing paragraph. You end by thanking the person and mentioning that you'd like a reply as soon as possible. Make it quick. Look. Looking forward to your reply. Show that you are interested in his reply. Thank you for your time. I look forward to hearing from you. Please send me a reply with any information as soon as possible. Signing off. Use a semi-formal signature ending like many thanks or best wishes. D. Below are parts of a semi-formal email. Not all the words, phrases are appropriate. You can't write this to someone you don't know. This is not appropriate. Rewrite them in an appropriate style. Make them okay to be sent to someone you don't know. 1. Hey, Mr. Frank Jones. Well, is it okay to write to Frank Jones this way? Hey, Mr. Frank Jones. No, you write dear. Dear Mr. Jones, you don't use the first name, just the last name. 2. I saw your ad in a mag. Okay, what's the problem here? You are using reductions, ad for advertisement, mag for magazine. It is not okay to write this to someone you don't know. You can write this to a friend. We will make it. I saw your advertisement in a magazine. And I would like some information. So no contractions, no reductions, not I'd like some, no I would like some. Three. Oh, and lastly, send me some photos, okay? We'll make it lastly. Could you please send me some photographs? Photos? That's reduction. Make it photographs. When you say send me, that is direct question. We will make it indirect. Could you please send me? Okay. Four. Write back soon. Yours, Bill Dale. I look forward to hearing from you. This is informal. You write this to a friend. Many thanks instead of yours. And then Bill Dale is okay. You can just write Bill Dale. Now, E. Role play. Go to page 63. In 4E2, listen. We listen to someone calling a travel agency to ask for information. I want you to go and watch that video. 4E2. Because you will do a similar thing here. You and a friend will have to role play. One of you will be the customer, the one who is calling a travel agency, and the other will be the one receiving the call. And you will make a conversation similar to the one we had in 4E2. Listen. Now, here is a conversation that I suggest using. You don't have to copy this. Now, make your own conversation. This will help. And then F, you will write a similar email. Now, we saw. An email written by Matthew to Mr. Al Hassan, you can use that to write yours. Write an email, write a letter to a travel agency asking for information. Use this advertisement. And here is the email. Don't copy it, you can just use it as a guide. Word bank. Repeat after me. Justify, local, information, minimum, required, per, exact, furthermore, 
provide equipment extra facilities looking forward reply features semi formal thank you for watching this video if you like it please share it with friends i will leave you now with the workbook exercises goodbye